the GP crisis on Britain's new built estates. We're going to read into this exclusive from iNews, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an exclusive from iNews with a headline that the GP crisis on Britain's new built estates. So the number of patients per GP has risen over by a third in some areas as residents move into new homes without supporting infrastructure. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. So when we, the Labour government talk a lot about building so many homes. 1.5 million homes, I think it's the figure that you keep banging on a flower flower on the route, you know. And this is definitely something that we need more of, in particular here in England, shall we say. Let's We'll talk specifically England here. We we don't have enough homes. That has been one of the essential uh, problems. But also, is a, another key point as well, is that we have many homes that are obviously, um, that are in desperate need of refurbishment, desperate needs of renovation, desperate need of insulation for example to reduce their heating bills we have a lot of homes that are simply not suitable for human human habitation pretty much i think is the right word that that's how bad some of the homes are or rented accommodation shall we say as well but in this one in particular we're talking about new homes here now it's all well and good set so building like a new neighborhood in a town or building a new row and a building uh, building new houses and whatnot but like everything you've got to have as this as this exclusive reveals you've got to have the infrastructure around it so what does that mean well you know means that the school's going to get the, the local school in your in your town or your community obviously means it's going to get more tighter in the classroom which means that well they're going to need more classrooms because eventually there's going to be too many children in there it's going to be harder for the teachers to teach so you need a new class it may get to a point where perhaps the school is overwhelmed with ki with kids as you continue to build new homes in that area. Maybe there'll be a request from the MP from the MP from that area and the council to say, "Well, we need another school to help accommodate because one school is no longer a, no longer works here, here in this town or village, for example, because we're getting overwhelmed because of all these new homes." As it says here about the GPs, you know. We're already struggling in our nation in the national healthcare service when it comes to getting doctors uh, to getting your appointments. We already know that we still have a massive waiting list that needs to be dealt with. By building new homes, bringing in uh, uh, new families, obviously coming into them, people who go from you know living with their parents and whatnot to buying a new home because you want to encourage the next generation of people to be able to buy new homes. At the moment, they're unaffordable. We would like to think that some of these homes would be affordable. But also, they need to have uh, be able to see a GP, need to see a doctor. We could get sick or worse, and they need that need that uh, checkups. And obviously, the doctors and GPs already in those areas are already full. So again, you need to have that. Then, of course, there's the other thing about transportation. You need to have transportation. You know, if you're built like a brand new neighbourhood, some people in that who might move into those new homes and whatnot. Some of them might be quite uh, senior and they can't get round too much. So they need public transport to get them to the village, uh, get them to the town centre. As you continue to build these new homes, will there be the, the public transport built for them? Or perhaps maybe if there's a big enough, big enough, maybe a new train station will be needed. Everything, as you have said, requires investment, a great deal of investment and for planning. It's all well and good saying that you want to build homes. But you have to have all the infrastructure around it. You can't just have homes. You've got to have the hospitals. You've got to have the schools. You've got to have the education, the healthcare, the transport, uh, the community vibes. All, all sorts of things that, you, that people need to have in their towns. Hell, you might even need a new high street, you know, for new shops and whatnot. So there's all these things that need to be taken into account when it comes to building new homes. Now, granted, there are some uh, situations where they just need a new block and block an added area and they just probably need some uh and the schools probably may be coping may not be coping there may some be some exceptions where it's possible that they don't need too much infrastructure but the vast majority of these cases you need to add you need to have all these complex infrastructures to them 
And obviously, this all requires money. Money, obviously, that that the, the, the government has the power to put its hand in its pocket and do. You cannot rely on the private sector to do this all for you. Government must put its hand in its pocket. If they are serious about dealing with the housing crisis, they've got to put their hand in their pocket. If they don't put their hand in their pocket, they've only got themselves to blame if people are still complaining about the lack of homes. Oh, and there's the added benefit of upsetting a lot of people of the phrase, not in my backyard as well, because a lot of people have some very nice views outside their homes and will not want their homes to be, uh, and the green belts and green land or, or, or some fields, to be turned into new residential areas behind them. And that's also going to upset some voters that voted Labour before as well. So Labour have a lot of challenges with this, that is for sure. But let's read a bit more into this from this exclusive from iNews, you guys. So new built homes are being built without promised GP surgeries, push, putting pressure on local healthcare services that could worsen under Labour's plans to ramp up house building, doctors and councils have warned. The number of patients per GPs have increased by more than a third in some parts of England since 2017, as residents move into new development built without supporting infrastructure. And despite pleas from residents, funding for healthcare services from developers is not being spent according to data shared exclusively with the eye. At least 17 councils have had more than £1 million in in-use healthcare funds secured via the planning system in 2023. Data obtained via the Freedom of Information request shows. Keir Starmer pledged that no new homes would be built without the infrastructure to match them. But councils have already told the eye that they that they have higher house building targets to meet, even though changes to the planning system to match this have not yet been made. <clears throat> well, it's obviously, it's, he's saying one thing, but is he giving enough, yeah, for, for councils to do what they need to do here? Hmm. The government has pledged to build 1.5 million new homes within five years. Yeah, it was 1.5 million. It rejected claims that this ambitious target risks exaggerating the country's GP crisis, arguing it has been clear with developers that new homes must be built alongside infrastructure, including surgeries. South Tyneside in Tyne and Ware has the biggest jump in patients per GP since 2017, from 1,642 to 2,408, a 47% surge according to the eye analysis of the NHS and House of Commons Library data. That's an insane jump of patients needing a GP. And obviously if you don't build this if you don't build the surgeries you don't have those for them. When you have such a jump like that. That's from 20, since 2017. We're in 2024 now, so what's that? Five, seven years. Like have there been enough that have been enough GPs been built in those areas? What I think what probably happened and what's happening in a lot of cases is people just gone private because obviously there's not enough of the public NHS there because the government the Conservative government for a long time have just underfunded and cut cut the NHS down which gave the opportunity for private healthcare companies to step in and take them take the money from people <coughs> some 1850 homes have been built during the same period official data have shown residents recently blocked controversial plans for 1200 homes on green belts a land south on Felgate in Tyne and Ware but but they were told that the eye uh, that they were worried about more house building to come under Labour. Well, that's the thing. How they want to meet their targets, don't they, Labour? So this here, this is a source from the House of Commons Library. NHS, this is the eye analysis here. This is areas with the biggest surge of patients per GP there. As you can see, obviously, we spoke about South Tyneside with the highest number there. Stoke-on-Trent, another one there. Uh, Jonathan Gullis is old, uh, old, old ground. Greater Preston there, another massive jump there from 1,800 to 2,400. 33.9% increase. Another jump there, Leicester City, 33. These are some big numbers. Uh, Northwest London has had a, a 700, uh, 700 jump as well. Portsmouth, another 700 roughly jumped to 30% to as well. Canuck Chase there, another 30% uh, jump. So a lot, a lot of some big numbers there. And South Tyneside obviously with the, the massive one there. North Cumbria there, 296 just under 30%. Bolton and South Sultan there. And then there's the second page there. You can just have a quick gather. Somerset, East Lancashire, Oldham, Swapshire, Telford and Wrecken, Blackburn and Doan, South West, South End, sorry. Uh, West Essex, South East London, uh, Bedfordshire West and Southport and Thornbury there. 
So, but these are we got these are still massive jumps from 2017 to 2014, regardless. And <clears throat> while the population has increased, our healthcare system has been more and more stretched as a result of it as well. Because of course the gov the conservative governments, previous conservative governments, cut the national healthcare service to the bone, which is hence why people have turned to private. Because if you can't get the healthcare you need, you're going to pay for the healthcare you need. Because literally, it's the difference between living and dying for some people. Stoke on Trent in Staffordshire had a 35% rise in the number of patients per fully qualified MPs, while Greater Preston in Lancaster had a rise of 34%. In Stoke on Trent, 3,060 new homes were built since 2017, while in Preston, the figure was 5,250. Portsmouth and Leicester have had some of the biggest increases in patients per GP since 2017 and now have the largest number at 3,040 and 2,919 respectively. So Professor Kamala Holthorn, Chair of the Royal College of GPs, have raised concerns that the need for more GPs is not being considered carefully enough by government in its house building plans. As communities expand, it's essential that local services expand as well and that includes increasing the size and numbers of GP practices, she said. It's vital that any new development is built in line with sufficient primary care infrastructure planning so that patients can receive their care locally. Yes, education and other infrastructure, as we mentioned. It is therefore worrying that the government's plan to changes to regulations specifically encourages players to think about their hospitals, but not primary care or general practice. And Dr. David Wugley, Deputy Chair of the British Medical Association GP Committee in England, said developers had obli have obligations to fund infrastructures and make money available to expand health uh, services. But we know that this not, does not always translate into new capacity, whether that is a new GP practice or extending an existing one. He said, we know from our members that GPs often struggle to tap into these funding pots. Excuse me. There are various potential reasons for this. Whether that's developers not providing the funding in the first place or integrated bo uh, care boards, that's ICBs, councils not engaging properly to ensure local needs are met. There i will say that there are always significant challenges when it comes there are always significant challenges yeah that's for sure um but if you have a clear plan the majority nine times out of ten it should go through if you have a clear plan labor voice labor have always they they have a target but do they have a clear detailed plan of how they're going to meet that target without just ball rushing everything through and something tells me that they're probably going to bull rush a lot of this through without enough consultation to ensure that they meet their target that's a worry as well i know many people have said that labor aren't going to meet this target i'm just going on the spot on the point that maybe they will but let let but it's it's whether you want to agree or disagree whether they'll hit the target or not it's also a problem that a one-off capital investment goes only so far without considering the ongoing cost of running a practice at both ICB and practice level. Separately, even if a developer funds an entirely new practice building, GPs are needed to take on a partnership with all the responsibility and financial liberties that this email and more GPs and other staff needed to be attracted to areas and recruited. Yeah, it's also, yeah, <clears throat> this is another factor I didn't mention at the start as well, which is really important. So obviously retaining, uh, recruiting and retaining uh, GPs. One of the problems that we have here is that we, we haven't for a long time been paying paying those in, the, in the, paying those enough and obviously then they end up turning to private care or they end up going going abroad because we um if if the money is not satisfactory for them what's the point in them working here that's one of the biggest problems we have here in england i would say as well so this is areas with the highest number of patients per gp here um number of patients uh each fully qualified for gps in 2024 and you can see their portsmouth the highest there with 3040 there as the numbers go down again you can see there from the numbers this is a source from the house of commons library nhs there as well he said the issues with recruitment can be more uh, common in rural areas of those with high levels of de uh, deprivation which makes existing health uh, inequalities worse yeah obviously those with those in those areas where people are much a lot worse off um it's much worse for them if they're not getting their health care and uh it obviously the, those private health cares can really take advantage of those really struggling but yeah some people just won't be able to go to private health care just because they just can't afford it just can't helen morgan the liberal democrats health spokesperson said frontline health services are failing because of years of conservative neglect and called for eight thousand new gps 
And she said, as we build new homes, we desperately must uh, ensure that people can see their GPs. We want community-led development with the infrastructure to back it up as the heart of it. Yeah, I think everyone agrees with that. Megan Hitch, a policy and practice officer at the Chartered Institute of Housing, said achieving Labour's housing target will need some investment alongside infrastructure uh, reforms being put out. Yeah, like I said, they have to put their hand in their pocket if they want to meet this. Richard Lice, uh, Richard Wright, a planning spokesperson for the District Council Newark, said developers sometimes promise a GP surgery when applying for planning permission, but fail to deliver it once the homes are actually built. As part of a planning process, the councils negotiate with developers to get contributions towards infrastructure and affordable houses. But these formulas are to help uh, to determine these contributions and developers typically expect a expect a profit margin of 20% uh, to proceed with the project, according to the Home Builders Federation. Yeah, and yeah, you, then there needs to be a profit. So there's no profit. Mm. Mr. Wright is also, conservative, uh, is also the conservative leader of North Kishkam District Council, said developers often, often renegotiate this after getting planning permission, saying that their infrastructure or the affordable housing commitments are no longer financially viable, meaning that they cannot afford it because their costs were higher than expected. One of the reasons costs go up for developers is that is that the land that they intend to use for the project shoots up in value once planning permission is granted, meaning that they have to pay landowners more. How many people have talked about a land tax? Answers in the comments below. Mr. Wright urged the government to change this so the increase in land value is shared with local authorities. The landowners uh, walks away with the entire profit whilst everyone else is scrambling around for health provisions and such forth, he said. The entire, the previous sorry, Conservative government enhanced the, the powers of council to use compulsory purchase orders, PCOs, to buy land without the owner's consent. And councils can ask the Housing Secretary to approve a payment that does not factor in planning uh, permission related increases. But Labour has pledged to further reform these powers to make them easier for councils to use. However, Mr. Riot said this is unlikely to be a practical solution for councils. That has to be the last resort because you haven't been able to negotiate, he said. You've got all your costs, your legal costs, and you're going to be in an argument. And there's obvious, there's going to be, obviously, bad blood between you and the owner. If that's not a big developer, it's more of a local landover, and then that could be creating issues in your community as well as you need them on site for whenever, the, whenever it is you're planning to build. Yeah. All these things, guys. All these things. In other cases, it said the NHS does not want a new GP surgery, which means it does not appear in the plans for new development at all. Mr. Wright said the NHS typically requests funding from developers are in proportion to the numbers of new homes built. That doesn't mean that GP surgeries are actually delivered in the new communities. Yeah, if, if the NHS needs to have that cost covered when new, new surgeries are built. If they don't get that cost covered, where they, like, where are they going to get the money for it? They need to have the money covered. In this part of Lincolnshire, they call it the hub uh, as spokes model, but they're trying to set up a multi-purpose centre that provides services. But of course, that doesn't put GPs right into the centre of new communities, so they're often uh, the cause of lack of GPs. People forget as well that GPs are private practices. They're a business. Unfortunately, we often get residents saying, well, if you build a GP surgery, build a surgery, you'll get GPs. Unfortunately, it's not a field of dreams. It's not if we build it, they will come. It's got to be a viable business for them. GP surgery is really declined in the community as a business model for both GPs and for the NHS. He said these bigger multi-purpose centres can often mean residents having to travel to further to see a GP, even if the public transport service does not exist to help them get there without a car. Yeah, this 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 severely hampers, especially people of much older people, um, which is why I said that obviously when you're building new homes, if you don't build the infrastructure, like I mean, Keir Starmer says he's going to build the infrastructure for them, but <clears throat> There's been some questions already about some of these things. That's right. Raised concerns that communities could be left with uh, even more new homes without accompanying infrastructure under Labour's plans to scale up house building. Said it's the developer's dream. Council's already been given higher housing targets to meet the changes to the plan system. They're still being consulted on. Mr. Wright said it's best to build new homes where infrastructure already exists and that can be improved rather than creating it from scratch. But said at the moment. You've seen developers that would rather go into more rural areas where they've got the handles on the land than build 204 excuse me, new homes that don't attract the huge infrastructure bill that it should. They walk away with almost a titanic contribution to the infrastructure, walk away with the profits on their homes, and we've now extended the size of a village beyond the size it can cope, infrastructure rise. Yeah, and then the village cannot cope because it doesn't have the infrastructure for it, and it's like, help, we need money, we need money and the government's not giving them money. And the councils aren't getting enough money. 
Um, yeah, this story here, obviously, uh, a new resident built, died of undetected cancer. I've been unable to see a GP here. Um, I'm not going to read the story there, but uh, the link for it will be in the description there, guys. But yeah, as a result, when a GP is not available, pe people obviously suffer, and like I said, people will die. Steve Turner, the executive director at the Homes Builder Foundation, said local authorities already have millions of pounds from developers for healthcare services that they are not using. He acknowledged that there are circumstances where commitments to deliver infrastructure are not fulfilled by developers, but said in a lot of cases they do make contributions and then uh, that then sit in the bank accounts. Yeah. That's an, a frustration for us because we pay for this part of development costs. And then you want that to be then the spent to benefit both existing residents in that area and new residents on that development. <clears throat> if the local authorities have sat on it for years, clearly it's not doing what it was intended and the system is not working in that regard. So this is what you do. Change the system. If the system doesn't work, change it. You've got to change the system. It's not rocket science. You've got to, you've got to put it in a, in a position where you say, you have to do X, Y, and Z. If you don't do X, Y, and Z, you will owe us X amount of money or something. Like put some clause in a con, put some clause in the contract saying that if these things aren't built by a certain amount of time, then you get, you know, put some clause, put something in there, some safeguards in so that these guys don't run away with all the money and that everything that is needed to be built is built. <coughs> this is the councils with the most unspent healthcare funds there. <sighs> what a surprise here is a lot of, uh, I can see quite a few London ones here. Greenwich, 4.41 million. Unspent healthcare funds. Lewisham, Rashley's Borough Council, Charnham Borough, London Borough, Islington, Lambeth as well. Yep, a lot of London ones there. Huge amount of money there. Uh, that's from the sources from the Home Builders Foundation. At least 17 local authorities in England have had more than 1 million in unspent healthcare contributions last year, according to the data from the Home Builders Federation shared with the eye. As we said, Greenwich Council in London has the biggest amount at 4.4 million, followed by Rashcliffe uh, Council in Not Nottinghamshire, 2.9 million. Lewisham Council also uh, also in South East London, 2.1 million. Data obtained from the Freedom of Information Law shows. South East London is among the top 20 areas with the biggest rise in patients per GP since 2017 and is the top 20 areas with the worst ratio currently. Seven London councils uh, were in the top 20 for having the most unspent healthcare funds from developers including Islington, Kensington and Chelsea and Lambeth. Kensington and Chelsea Health Services is covered in the Northwest uh, London ICB, which has a 33% a rise in patients per GP since 2017. It is the eighth among areas with the worst patients to GP ratio. And some 171 councils in England, Wales and about half have responded to requests for information so they could be uh, held a total of £46 million in unspent funds for healthcare service. Councils hold on to these large sums and said it was up to the NHS to decide when to use them. Yeah, this is another uh, story here. Braintree District Council uh, here talking about the, the, the crisis that they are in there as well. Um, I'm not going to cover that bit, but again, like I said, the link will be in the description if you want to read that bit like the other piece earlier. A government spokesperson has said, we don't recognise these claims. We have been clear to expect to build new homes to come with infrastructure, including GP surgeries. Under our plan developers, we also expected to contribute more to help build these vital services alongside housing. More widely, we have begun hiring an extra 1,000 GPs into the NHS and put an extra £311 million funding into GP practices. So the government have literally dismissed the claim here from the eye that this is, that this is the case here. So the government are basically saying all these, all these uh, numbers from the home builders, from the freedom of information requests, from people who are not getting the GPs. Apparently, nope, it's not. It's like nope, that not true whatsoever. That that's allegedly what they're stating there. Um, they don't recognise this. Well, I probably would uh, incline. Like I don't consider the I news. Do they always get it right? No. Do I think there is some truth to this? Absolutely. I do think, yeah, I do think that the lack of GPs do play, uh, are playing a part. But we also have to remember is that the National Healthcare Service has suffered immensely as well over the last 14 years under the Conservative rule. We also have to take that factor into account, obviously the impact of COVID, but we've long passed that, si passed that situation now. So we can't be using COVID as an excuse for the crisis with our N N N NHS now. Um, 
definitely it's, it's not something really that can be arg it can be used as an excuse shall we say um at this point but we do need new homes that is in agreement um but they just but Keir Starmer has said that he build the infrastructure for them but is he going to build the infrastructure for them that is the question and do we believe some of the stories that we're reading in this piece guys so what do you guys think what do you guys make of the story here about the gp crisis on britain's new built estates do you believe what they are saying here the government are dismissing some of these claims what do you guys honestly think let me know your thoughts and more down in the comment section below if you found this video informative please hit the like button we greatly appreciate it. share this across social media so others are notified of this video and if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing because it really does help support the channel if you want to go one step further and financially support me and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as just 99p, or you can join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms as well. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.